Hi guys, welcome back to the shed. The other day we were talking about these international doors and the repairs they needed, and I mentioned that I'd use the die grinder to cut the corners of the frame out. So that's what I've done. So I've got here a sharp edge burr, and it's actually got a cutting side on the end as well as on the side, and it's just the perfect tool to get into things like this rusty frame and just run along the edge there and V it out. And you don't even have to cut it all the way through, but if you get most of the way through, you can peel the rusty section out and it's gonna snap on that point. I've also used it this way and cut along here to get rid of the jagged pieces off there and take that edge off as well. So now all I had to do was cut this new section of metal. It's just going to drop into there. Once again, we're matching the um, size of the material up to the size of the frame and I'll weld around that, grind it back with the belt sander, a bit of primer on there, and then I'm ready to crimp the edge back down and the job's done. But I've got another problem on this door I wanted to share with you today, and it's got some broken off studs. So these are little 3 16th, well Whitworth really, UNC type threaded screws that actually hold the door to the hinge. Now two of them have snapped off when I've been taking it apart on the truck. I looked at my options at the time of being able to actually sit there and work the screws out, whether I could get a little bit of heat on the nut on the back of it that's welded to the frame, and I decided the easiest thing for me and the quickest repair was to just let them snap off and then get them out later. So that's what I'm doing now, and we're going to use welding as a method to get them out. So a little bit of the theory about how it works. If you weld something to a broken off stud, the heat is going to go down the stud, and because hot metal is soft metal, the actual stud is going to expand within the, the nut or the whatever it is that it's screwed into, whether it be an engine block or anything like that. And while it's momentarily expanded, it shrinks itself because it's pushing out and it can't go anywhere because of the cool metal around it. So then, when it cools back down, you let it cool down. Normally, they just unscrew. We'll see how we go with this one because when you're playing with metal, there's no guarantees. Now I've just grabbed an old bolt, and I like old bolts because you can put a spanner on the end of it. If you're in America, you can put a wrench on the end of it. It'll still work the same way. And then just weld it to the edge of the broken off stud. The big trick is welding onto the stud and not welding the stud into whatever you're trying to get it out of. Steady hand, guys. Ready? I've put more weld on there deliberately than what I actually need to hold the bolt on. And the reason for that is to get that heat to run down that broken stud and then expand it and get that contraction. So we'll let that one cool down. But if we have a look at the other one, it's broken off down into the nut. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'll build a little bit of weld up on it and then we can weld the bolt to the piece we build onto the top of it. Now this is your trickiest one because if we miss and weld it to the piece that it's stuck in, We've just compounded the problem. So, see how we go. Now hopefully that's only welded to the bolt. Now there's a little bit of oxidisation down there because the bolt is actually rusted into the thread and that's come up through the weld and caused a little bit of porosity but I'm hoping that won't hurt the process. Big thing now is to just let the heat do its job. So if we just give that five minutes or so and we come back to it, with a bit of luck both of these are going to come out easily. Okay, it's had time to cool down, and it's actually, I can turn that by hand, that's how easy it's going to be. But if you're coming up to this blind, always rock your stud a little bit to loosen it up a bit. And instead of just trying to wind it out, if you just take it out in a rocking motion, generally they will always come out like this. So now it's loose, it'll just unwind. So we can even see the rust on the end of the bolt that we've loosened up by getting the heat to run down that little broken off bolt. It's not focusing. See it now? Yeah. So we can even see the rust on the end of the bolt that was holding it in there before, but because we've got that bit of heat down there, it's loosened all that, broken it up, and now it just unscrews. Piece of cake. So we'll just weld this onto the other piece, and hopefully it's going to come out just as nicely as what this one did. Ready? Okay. 
I'm not that fussy about letting this one cool down as much because we've already got a bit of heat down there and cooked it in there. All we want is the weld to cool down enough to be strong enough that it's going to bite onto our previous piece of weld. So, haven't left it much time, but we'll see what it does. does. If it snaps off, we can always do it again. That's it. Just felt that little spot where it loosened. And now we can just rock him a bit. And the rocking motion actually breaks the rust up, powders it up. And if, I can feel as it comes around here, it's binding again. So until it breaks that little piece of rust up there, it's tight. But now we've got it. It's loose. It'll come out. So no real fuss at all. We've left our holes perfectly clean. There's no weld stuck on the edges of them. There's no drilling and tapping and things like this. I actually use this method most of all for getting broken off studs out. And I have done thousands of them, probably tens of thousands of them. If this method fails, then you can still go on to drilling them and things like that. But this is always the first go-to for me. Talk to you soon, guys. Stay safe.